winner of the inaugural International Recognition Award, Geoffrey Archer. <laughs> Geoffrey, what is the significance of this award for you? I mean, your shelves must be groaning with these type of trophies, but why did you come here this evening? Well, you're very kind to say that. The truth is that uh, this is a special award because, dare one say it, the Irish and the Indians are the biggest per capita readers of books in the world. So you know where your market is. My market, it, Ireland, is, is, is very important because way back, seems a long time, th over 30 years ago, I came over here to do the Late Late Show with Gay Byrne, and Gay stood up and said he just read Cain and Abel, and he predicted that it would go to number one in every country in the world. I remember going back to my wife and saying, how does he dare to do that? And God knows he turned out to be right. It went to number one everywhere in the world. And I, that, in a way, I, I always say, that was the turning point in my career. The Gay Byrne Late Late Show on Cain and Abel was the turning point of my career. It's interesting you say that because I don't think there's a house you can rent in Ireland in the summer that doesn't have a copy of Cain and Abel <laughs> stuffed down the back somewhere. I mean, Irish readers have responded so enthusiastically to mm. your writing and your mm. stories. Why do you think that is? I think they, they, I think they love storytelling, the Irish. Mm. Uh, they love writers and they admire writers and they admire good writing. But in their hearts, they secretly love a Shanachie. They love someone who tells a tale, who says, once upon a time, and you have to turn the page. They want the writing to be a high standard. Mm. They're very demanding. But most of all, they love a story. Now, George Hook presented you with the award this evening. Tell us a little bit about your on-air, off-air relationship with George. Well, George has this uh, <laughs> amazingly stupid idea that uh, the Irish could win the World Cup. I mean, this is absolutely... Controversial. The English are going to win the World Cup. Not the way they've been... <laughs> Not the way they've been playing the last few weeks. Indeed. No, it's a long relation. It's a, I, I, I love George's attitude to sport and his spirit and the whole... Uh, his, you couldn't be more Irish than him. He'd die on the road for the Irish, and I admire that. And he's very kind. The introduction was extremely kind and well thought out. Now, number five in the Clifton Chronicles. You're as prolific as ever. No plans to retire? Well, the problem was, when I wrote the Clifton Chronicles, the story of Harry Clifton and Emma, who he marries, and Giles, who becomes a member of parliament. I planned it for five, uh, but the trouble was at the end of four, because of the World War and because of other things, Second World War, he was only 40. So I went back to my publisher and said, I can't kill him off in the next book. So they agreed that I could do seven. So the fifth one, Mightier Than the Sword, will be out on February the 26th next year. But more to come. Two more after that, if I live that long. <laughs> I'm glad you laugh, because <laughs> I'm 74 years old. Keep writing. Jeffrey I will Archer. keep writing. Keep typing, keep writing. Ladies and gentlemen, Geoffrey Archer. <laughs>